When I first started this job um, here in Montana um, at the university, I was fresh out of college and I had a lot of experience and I was very well versed in evolution. I took evolution and everything like that, but I'd get these creationists or um, born again Christians that would come up to me and just bury me in questions. And I'm like, I'm not an evolutionary biologist. I study the dead stuff, you know, like, but more in an isolated context of this is an animal, what did it do and how did it behave? And so these questions would just pile up to me. And if I couldn't answer them, they were right. You know, it was, it wasn't like, yes. you know, you I'm like, answer, therefore, yeah. Yeah. And I'm like, well, take this <laughs> up with Richard Dawkins and you're not going to feel the same way type of thing, uh, you know, like, and so it's yeah. like they pick low hanging fruit, like, oh, you don't study this. So I can just overwhelm you with questions that you can't answer. And because you can't answer them, I'm right. Um, and you, they, they always come back to, well, you can't tell us where life, how life started. So, well, that's not really evolution as such. <laughs> yeah, you know. my uh, my. Uh, anytime they brought that one up to me, I'd be like, "Well, so your argument against evolution is life can't come from nothing. So, what created God?" Yeah, yeah. And that usually makes their brain break. I've I've never seen so many um, create creationists and and born again Christians like it's like sparks <laughs> coming out of their head. Like they can't. They can't deal with it. And I'm just like, you're, I'm using your argument against you, you know, like, well, you, you've never heard the response. I've, uh, the response I've heard is, uh, oh, he doesn't need a creator because he's outside of time. Oh, that <laughs> that's, so watch out for that. <laughs> <laughs> I will. Most of the time they just like, well, he's omnipresent. He's past, future, present, present. He's right. been here always. And I'm like, no, 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 no. He is a thing. He is a being as you like to say. And so who created that being? Where did this being come from? How did that get started? <laughs> I, like I said, I try not to engage too much. What's actually been happening to me more now um, is climate deniers. And they Ooh. pick me to ask all these questions. And again, I'm not a climate scientist. And so like they try to ask me, all, well, what's the cost benefit of changing our ways to mitigate climate change. And I'm like, you want me to give you the cost change analysis of every hypothesis on how we can make it better? Because you... they look at you as though you're uh, there, the, this other religion, you're an evolutionist mm -hmm. and all that entails. Therefore, like we've got the Bible in our minds completely. Um, you must have all this in your mind. You know, we know you're wrong. So, you know, we're going to catch you out. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm not, uh, man, I wish I had all of the answers and I have, I'm way more well-versed than I was when I first started. And so, um, I can usually handle most of their questions to a point where I can debate them. But again, I just don't even feel like giving yeah. them a stage anymore you know it's like with the the piltdown man that you did uh, what they will say is that science created that hoax and it's like well, well no we don't really know who created the piltdown man hoax but it was probably uh, some opportunist because mm -hmm. evolution was a big thing and he wanted to sell the skull to a museum or something like that it was science who later on uh, discovered that it was a hoax. No, right. That didn't create it in the first place. Yeah. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that the discoverer of the Piltdown Man was the hoaxer. I'm, I'm pretty convinced that well, it Dawson, was him. Dawson, Dawson, yeah. 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 I'm pretty sure it was him. Um, and he, I if mean, that's he, his real name. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he was like, already kind of a swindler of antiquities before Piltdown Man. So like this was his way of making himself legitimate in the eyes of science um, instead of being a swindler. And so I'm yeah. pretty sure it was him, but yeah, I mean, the it's funny. All of the evidence we have of that being a fake is just like today it's like, oh my God, how did you guys not see this? How, how did the you- The file down teeth and everything. Yeah, I mean, now you, they would just glance at it, you know, and say, 
Oh, that's oh, big. <laughs> that's, something's wrong with that, you know, and especially some of the, the identifying characteristics of the lower jaw, for example, the attachment points for <laughs> the skull mm. are missing. They're worn down, you know, so like mm. that guy knew enough about human anatomy yeah. and identification that he purposefully muddled the IDing factors of the skull and made sure that the parts of the skull that you do um, some triangulation and all this stuff, like those weren't there. The attachment points for the jaw weren't there. So some mm. of the things that would give you those straight answers about that skull were not found or eroded off the specimen. So it's like you look at it and it's just raises a ton of red flags. But, um, mm. but I mean, at the time, we didn't have all this modern knowledge of it. Well, in any case, it's like that was in the past and they were discovered to be hoaxes. It's right. Like, you know. like we've called them out. Like these aren't. And so, and the evidence that you have that those are fakes are not found on any of the legitimate stuff you, we find today. So unless there's mm. some like time traveler from the future that's going to the past to mess yeah. with us, like, you know, that's not the parsimony here that, you know, that's like, you're, you're creating stories now. So um yeah. it's it's really interesting yeah L living here in montana i'm from kansas so i dealt with this in kansas as well i mean oh, kansas, kansas oh that's where they've got the museum yeah oh, the, the creation museum well they've got one here in montana too so um yeah, we've yeah. got one in england which i st literally stumbled into by mistake oh, no. a few weeks ago i had heard of it but i completely forgotten and i was down in south hampton which is basically, uh, you'd know it from, you know, the beginning of Titanic, the the the, the boat actually leaves from the dock. That oh, is yeah, yeah. Well, it's there. Okay. So there's a lot of Titanic stuff down. And we were, me and my friend, we were, we were just, he was trying to show me things. And I said, oh, you've got a, a fossil museum. And he said, oh, I've never noticed that before. And so we went in. It was just a tiny place. And um, it's basically a big U-shaped. So you go in one corridor and it's all fossils and it seems very legit then you go around the corner and it's all <laughs> creationist propaganda yeah uh -huh. and yeah. it's it's a, a religious charity which funds it and uh, yeah they're very well funded the one here yeah. is on in eastern montana um and it's at the glen dive and it's actually a kin ham museum of course of course yeah and so they're very well funded and they have it I mean, if it wasn't for all of the propaganda, it is an amazing museum. I mean, they've got wonderful specimens and they did a good job. It's hard to say that, but um, mm. yeah. And it's like right next door to a legitimate paleontology museum. Right. Sometimes I get people that come up to my booth or something and they'll be like, oh, well, I donated to the museum in Glendive. And I'm like, wait. Which, which one? one? <laughs> <laughs> which one did you donate to? And most of the time, they're like, "Oh, well, Ken Ham's museum," and I'm like, "Oh, oh. okay, I don't yeah, want to talk to you anymore." Need money. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't need any more money. Yeah, but have you but, noticed these creation museums? They they are they're always they're sort of being backed against the wall by actual science. You know, every they, time now they even have transitional fossils on that 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 arc of theirs you know, uh, Ambulocetus, you know, the early whales. And like, oh, so the, and, and next they're going to have feathered dinosaurs. It's like they, they keep having to concede, mm -hmm. but they still say they were all created at once right. 6,000 years ago. But <laughs> I know it's, it's so frustrating. It is very frustrating. And I, I, all I can do now is just to not give them a platform, basically. Like I just... I just ignore it. Like I, I don't engage. I don't talk to them. I don't mm. like know what you're. To me, what you're saying is talking about fairy tales, and that's not why I'm here. So, yeah, but that's why what you're doing is so important, and that's why I started this channel. It's just literally just to get it out there. True. Yeah. 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 And with eons, we don't we, we don't even have to say like we're battling the creationists. You know, like no. it's it's there it's in the title like we're studying evolution and here you go and i do mm. really enjoy some of our commenters being like oh my god i learned this completely wrong in school or i always mm. thought my teacher was a little you know not science like 
positive or whatever. And so I'm really glad that you're making this channel. I'm relearning a lot of stuff that I've learned wrong. And when we first started the channel, the comment section was a horrendous place. And we've since got banned words and we have a really strong community now that downvotes a lot of stuff. And so, um, but yeah, it was just like, more creative evolutionary fascists pushing their agendas and like oh my god oh yeah (laughs) those guys came out in force and i was like thanks for the view (laughs) they they know it's they know there's 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 something to it and Mm -hmm. it scares them yeah yeah and i'm just like there are a lot of people that have found a balance between their faith and science i know several of them up here i I don't understand how they do it, how they compartmentalize it in their heads, but they do. Yeah. And they have no problem with evolution, the age of the earth, but they're still spiritual. They still have this relationship with their their God, you know? And so it's a very interesting that some people have the capacity to be like, this is real life. This is the evidence that we find, but I still need faith. I need that relationship Mm. with my creator type of thing it's it's very interesting but i know several people that have no problems with it whatsoever that Mm. that have not found this this horrible like the evolutionists are trying to get rid of god type of uh it's all uh, they often bring up this thing about oh you have no purpose in it or no meaning in your life do you get that a lot yeah and and sometimes (laughs) i'm just like well you know i don't need a a invisible man in the sky to give me purpose you know i can find my own way i have ethics i have morals you know i know that you can't kill your neighbor over small arguments type you know Mm. like you can't kill your neighbor at all you know it's (laughs) like i i know there's right and wrong in the world and i do feel like i have purpose like for whatever reason i absorb information about ancient life I can talk about it literally all day. Ask my friends, ask my family. Like I could go on and on and on and on and on and on. And so that's like basically all I've done in my career is studied ancient life, studying Mm. fossils, studying the progression of life. And so that to me is my purpose. Like for whatever reason, my brain understands ancient life and I have no problem with deep time. It doesn't freak me out. And so like, um, that to me is a purpose. Like I'm doing yeah. what I feel like I was meant to do, you know, and I try to donate to charities, you know, I'm try I'm trying to be a good person.